All right, let's play with radio buttons, the next type of button. We have a standard button here with an icon in it. We did the icon last time. All right, now we want to add radio buttons. They're a little bit different. They're toggle buttons, um, and so they have a little bit of different con uh, situation. Um, first of all, we have to find a radio button. There it is, and we bring it up there. And uh, we will probably want to play with it a bit by making it a minimum size radio button. I probably want to give it a name. Again, I've already written the code, so I better give everything the same name. Uh, the text you put in it is down here. Um, just leave it as radio button. <coughs> okay, there's a radio button. It's got a name um, and the signals. The signals of a radio button it's a, uh, is that it's going to be a toggle button, usually. Um, so on, and it'll fill it in for you. On radio one toggled, hit enter. Make sure you do that. All right, let's get another radio button because you have to have multiple radio buttons for the thing to kind of work. And we go over to common and uh, we uh, drop its size. We go to general. We're calling it radio two. Call it what you want, of course. Um, and you can put the text in as desired. Uh, let's see. We go to signals. We go to toggle. We go to type here. We type O N or O M. Um, o N uh, radio button two toggled. Okay. Um, the only thing we might want to do is look at the packing. That guy starts in 240. This one should probably start in 240 as well, just to make them look kind of lined up. You probably want your radio buttons to be lined up. It's the usual thing. You can put them inside of a box, too, and things like that. People do different things with radio buttons. Okay, we need one more, just because uh, the code's been written for one more. Um, whoops, not display. We want a uh, radio button, and we'll put the radio button as close as to where it's going to go as possible. We'll go to common, we'll zap, zap. Um, we will go to signals, we will go to toggle, we will go to, and I'm typing O-N on, oops, unnamed, forget about that. Uh, I forgot to name it first. That can happen. Uh, Radio 3. Okay, now it's got a name. And so I go over here and I go back to signals, toggled. Uh, it should pick up the name. Yeah, Radio 3, it's picked it up now. So I'll just do it. A save there. Uh, this guy here, let's look at the packing. It's one twi uh, one pixel off there. Move it up a little bit. Um, maybe add a space in the word here. It doesn't matter what you have for your words. I mean, that's not part of the... Uh, that's your problem, not my problem. All right, so we got three radio buttons. Uh, how do we know they're connected? Well, we don't know they're connected. We have to have a group. We have to put the radio buttons in a group. And we group them by a common button that they're all related to. So you see here when I hit the uh, little uh, tech, whatever that sheet with a pencil on it, um, there's two, um, I'm on radio button three, and I can group it with radio two or radio one, grouping it with radio one, um, which means it's connected to radio button one. The two of them toggle off and on with one another now. Now I go to radio two, and I go to the group. Well, uh, it could it could be grouped with Radio 3, but no, Radio 3 is already grouped with Radio 1, so I group it also with Radio 1. So um, they're all grouped with Radio 1. Now you see Radio 1 by default is turned on. Uh, it's checked. Uh, there is a function to check and uncheck something if you, that's not your favorite default. Okay, uh, I also added, um, I modified the label. There's our original label. I uh, reduced the uh, size of the font. It's still here, um, still set up to be red and so forth, and now it's uh, but um, and I added an additional label right below it because uh, I'm going to need them in a moment um, in terms of the code. What's going to happen when you when you um, when you click a radio button? You're not seeing it here because it doesn't do it on the screen. Um, one turns off and the other turns on. There's that's a toggle event. You get a toggle event for the one that gets turned on, and you get a toggle event for or signal for the one that turns off. So you're going to get two signals. <coughs> and you can detect what has happened with a function. So uh, in, as a result, since I'm going to tell you what happened, I'm going to need two lines to do it in. One's a little longer than the other. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, all right, we are ready to go, I think. And we go over here to the code. Um, now, in the code, we have made some changes. First of all, we've got a label 2, which we did not have before. Also, we've got radio 1, radio 2, and radio 3, which we did not have before. Um, 
just add them I'm adding them globally um, probably not the best thing to do but it works all right uh, label 2 had to be added because I'm going to access label 2 I'm going to write stuff into it so it's been added to the builder um, lines and we've had three new align new lines for radio 1 radio 2 and radio 3 so that establishes the callback the connection the layout the image uh, for those new radio buttons everything else is the same until we get down here to the callbacks and I've got um, three additional callbacks here they're, up, they're effectively identical one for radio 1 one for radio 2 and one for radio 3 so we'll just look at radio 1 um, they receive a GTK radio button our GTK radio button um, is a GTK toggle button too so it's also a widget it's a whole bunch of things it's also a button but so it's going to be cast okay we have a function called GTK toggle button get active uh, typing exercise no it's a function it's a function that tells us whether the button is active and the button in question is the button of the signal which is B you notice that was the parameter uh, and I have to cast it from radio button to toggle button because a GTK toggle button gets active ex expects a toggle button but a radio button is a toggle button all right so um, there's a cast so it's casting B to be a toggle button passing it to the function and it returns a boolean a G boolean is the built-in GTK boolean uh, it's true or false uh, and if it comes back true it's active comes back the other way false uh, it's inactive so uh, if T I set label 1 to radio 1 active if false I set label 2 the other label to radio 1 not active and likewise for these buttons down here everything is the same except the phrase that goes into the uh, that goes into the labels um, is going to be radio 2 and radio 3 so when I click from radio 1 to radio 2 I should get a signal that says that radio there should be a toggle event for radio 1 and when I test it I'll find out that radio 1 is not active I should get a toggle event for radio 2 and I can check and I'll find out that radio 2 is active radio 3 is not in the picture at this point but if I check, check, click from radio 2 to radio 3 I'll get a uh, toggle event for radio 2 and a toggle event for radio 3 radio 2 toggle event will say that radio 2 went is not active and a toggle event for radio 3 will say it is active so that's the idea you get to what do you what are you going to do with these toggle events that one's turned off and the other one's turned on that's kind of up to you I mean you know by clicking on a radio button the fact that one of them went off may not be that important um, and the fact that the other one went on is the important thing but you you have both pieces of information if you want to use them and you can use them for anything you can you know run programs you can set up parameters uh, tables uh, all sorts of things <coughs> that will um that would be used for whatever you're doing but anyway the point from our point of view from the gtk level is that we are simply um, clicking from one to another and we're accessing the fact that it got clicked once I've got a hold of that I can do anything I want okay so um, compiling it um, which is the same as before and now running it um, I'm still calling it part one dash bin and there's the radio buttons you see then radio button one is the first one is checked by default because it's the root you could change that you could have the other ones you could have made the other ones the base but you know kind of the first ones usually the one now when I click radio button 2 here watch what happens radio 2 is said to be active that's one of those lines radio 1 is not active radio 1 this line here they're not the same color I didn't I didn't uh, change the attributes of the uh, label 2 that I added this line here is coming from the first callback the radio um, callback associated with radio button 1 this is the callback associated with radio button 2 they're coming from two different functions if I click radio 3 3 will become active and 2 becomes not active if I go to radio 1 radio 1 is active and radio 3 becomes inactive radio 2 nothing happened to it but when I clicked for this radio 3 went inactive radio 1 went active and I picked that information up so um, there you are this one should still put the whole world into it um, 
we're kind of reusing the same uh, labels at the moment. But the uh, the point, of course, is that you've you've when you click something on the screen, you've got a radio button. They're clicking, and the, they're, the other ones are turning off, and the new ones turning on. And you pick up both pieces of information: what got shut off and what got turned on. How you use it again is up to you.